and the turbocharged Maverick XDS with cash rebates up to $2,000. Don't miss out. Visit your local dealer during the Ready to Ride sales event. Can-Am. The ride says it all. From the very start, I wanted FitCore to be different. If you come to me, it's it's because you want to do what I do because I don't do what other people do. It's kind of like creating a brand for myself. Your business is unique. Your marketing should be too. With Vistaprint, it will be. Put your personal touch on 500 business cards starting at just $9.99. Just enter promo code TV500 at Vistaprint.com. Stay true to yourself. You can do this how you want to do it, and somebody else is going to think that's awesome and want to do it that way too. Vistaprint.com. In one moment, I felt it. I'm ready to lose weight, and I want to start now. Well, you can count, track, and worry over every meal, or you can lose weight simply with Jenny Craig. Bam! 50 pounds gone. Wow, ouch. First, meet your dedicated personal consultant who will help you reach delicious food and start losing now. Visit JennyCraig.com for our best offer ever. A moment can change your whole life. With Jenny Craig. Currently in our area, 77 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Today, a mix of clouds and sun. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible late. High, 91. Tonight, cloudy intervals, low 69. Winds southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Monday, mostly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. High, 89. Here's our seven day outlook. Welcome to Weekend Recharge on this Sunday. I'm Maria La Rosa. Hey, everyone. Good morning. I'm Mike Bettison for Paul Goodlow. Uh, so we've got another hour to go here. Mm -hmm. I want you to unplug. I want you to kind of get lost in the weather. So put all your devices down. It's easy to get addicted to this. Put it down. Put That's us calling. <laughs> let's just let's just connect. Let's get very let's get very zen weather like. You what know, do you say? it's 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 hard to completely shut off with just a philosophy, just so that you can kind of focus and let's get recharged for the week ahead because yeah. it's getting busy, right? It's ready to rumble right now. Absolutely. <laughs> he tried to hide a bottle of water, by I'm, the way, I'm on his chair. Down oh, wow. there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so we do have some storms coming. Yes, thunderstorms sweeping across the south. We're going to pinpoint, by the way, today's four states with the greatest risk of getting hit by severe weather, and then later this week. Week. We're talking probably in that Tuesday time frame, watching for some thunderstorm that could produce tornadoes. Yeah, and that's that even bigger, badder storm that's looming next week. This two-faced system will have that snowy side, but also that thunderstorm side that Mike was talking about. In fact, it could spawn the first tornadoes of the month. Plus, we're going to help you tap into your inner adventurer. It's in there, right? You don't even have to get out of your PJs. Well, that's not adventurous, <laughs> is it? You don't even have to get out of your PJs? You're, right. you're a new dad. That speaks what? to you. You're like, yes. Oh, I man. don't have to get out of my PJs again. Yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this segment. This is going to be a good one. Uh, but, you know, let's give you that first view of the weather, that snapshot of all the big stories that we'll be talking about today on Weekend Recharge, helping you finish up the weekend, recharge, get you thinking about next week. And it does include, unfortunately, a little bit of several seasons, actually. We could go ahead and say winter, spring, and summer a little bit. We've got the eastern chill for sure. Not only today, but you're going to feel it tomorrow morning as you're trying to get those uh, kids at the bus stop, maybe even some record cold wind chills to talk about too. And then you have the quick moving clippers producing snow right now in Minneapolis, which they have that snow drought, so adding to it a little bit, but also the rain and storms that we've been tracking, not just for today, with all that heavy rain that was in Texas yesterday, it's now pushed into uh, Mississippi, right. Alabama, all those spots, even Atlanta. It's been already a very wet, soggy Sunday. It has been. We had some record rainfall yesterday in right. parts of Texas, so would expect similar things to happen for us today, Louisiana and Mississippi. All right, wet start, obviously, so this Sunday Sunday in New Orleans. There's a live look right now. Cloudy skies. It'll be a little showery for us today, that's for sure. I want to give you the heads up on what's coming your way. 
and that is including a chance of severe. So we want to see what the situation around New Orleans is. All right, Tim Destry joins us on the phone from the National Weather Service in Slidell, Louisiana. Tim, good morning to you. Thanks for being with us. Walk us through today and maybe a little bit of tomorrow. What's your short-term forecast? Yeah, good morning, uh, Mike and Maria. Yeah. Um, basically, today we don't really have much going on right now. We have a lot of uh, just low cloud cover, and it's a uh, a little bit cool, uh, coolest right now. We expect some daytime heating, though. These clouds are going to break up, so we should have become unstable enough to get uh, definitely a greater number of showers, probably scattered showers, and possibly some thunderstorms as well. It looks like the most likely area to see thunderstorms and some strong and potentially maybe marginally severe, maybe one or two marginally severe storms with some uh, some strong wind gusts perhaps and maybe an isolated tornado. That area is generally uh, southeast Mississippi, coastal Mississippi, and some areas uh, maybe adjacent areas into south Southeast Louisiana, but the north shore of Lake Ponce Train. Um, and that would be mainly this afternoon. Um, tonight, uh, this low pressure system that's moving through is going to move off to the east, so we expect it to, to dry out, uh, some drier air moving in behind the cold front, and then so it's, tomorrow's looking really good here. All right, Tim Destry with the uh, National Weather Service. As always, these guys and gals are always on top of it, but it's all about communicating to the public, which, you know, honestly, we haven't had to deal with much in the way of watches and warnings recently. In fact, we've had no tornadoes right. so far yeah. this month anywhere in the United States, which is almost unheard of. In fact, in the history of record keeping, it hasn't happened That's before. Amazing. But there is a difference between a watch and a warning. Here's what a watch, tornado watch means for you. The atmospheric conditions are favorable for tornadoes. Conditions include high wind shear, high humidity, unstable air and watches are issued by the Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma. And then you have warnings, which takes everything up a notch, that urgency there, where you have uh, imminent uh, tornadoes developing or already on the ground, either Doppler radar indicated, you know, picking up on that rotation, or visually confirmed by a trained storm spotter, and they are issued by the local National Weather Service forecast offices like where Tim is in the New Orleans area. So just a day to kind of keep that in mind, and so you know how to prepare and react to both of those situations. Right now, though, in Atlanta, none of that happening. Just gray, kind of rainy 56 as we take a live look out there right now. It was certainly a rainy start for the Georgia Marathon this morning. Headed up to a high of 60 today. Mike, a sharp contrast. We were in the 70s yesterday. Oh, so nice to see those 70s, but all good things must come to an end, apparently. Rain and thunderstorms for us across the south. Here's a look at the uh, radar, and you'll see really lighting up here, in particular across Mississippi, but cloudy, showery across much of Alabama, Georgia, right into South Carolina. So there's a look at the flow today. That low sitting right basically over New Orleans and then just shifting ever so slightly off to the east, keeping us in that very wet regime over the next uh, two days or so. And for some of us, does include that severe weather threat from oh, Mobile over toward Pensacola Bay in toward Tallahassee right along I-10 will have some issues. I-20 will have a plenty of wet conditions for you here as well. There's the severe weather, spotty hail, some thunderstorms that could contain some wind from New Orleans on your way toward Panama City here as well. And plenty of Thunderstorms to, thunderstorms to go tomorrow as well. That include Tampa and Orlando over toward Daytona Beach and then run of the mill garden variety showers as you look north of there. One to two inches for many of you. Some of you may pick up just a little bit less than that. But then notice what our forecast is here for a place like, well, say Panama City. Thunderstorms for you today. Uh, temperatures that will actually be okay, 77 degrees, and then much drier for you. If you're on spring break and you want to get out there and you want to enjoy the beach, you want to get on the boogie board or maybe the skim board, I think Monday and Tuesday are better days to do that. Uh, maybe not so much for other parts of the country, right? Because we're talking about this next spring storm kind of ramping up and maybe spawning the first tornadoes of the season. All right, so coming up here on Weekend Recharge, we're going to break down the tornado timeline and the potentially destructive impacts they could have in the mid-Mississippi Valley coming up this week. This program brought to you by new Flonase Allergy Relief. Visit our allergy tracker at weather.com slash allergy. Introducing new Flonase Allergy Relief Nasal Spray, now available over the counter in full prescription strength. When we breathe in allergens, our bodies react by overproducing six key inflammatory substances that cause our symptoms. The leading allergy pill only controls one. Flonase controls six, and six is greater than one. Flonase, the 24-hour relief that outperforms the number one allergy pill. So go ahead, inhale life. New Flonase, six is greater than one. This changes everything. It took James Dyson 5,000 prototypes to invent the bagless vacuum. 
and another 10,000 to invent the only vacuum that doesn't lose suction. Thanks to patented sonic tips, everything else is history. Search Kinetic now. Dyson's Kinetic Vacuum, the first upright vacuum with Dyson Kinetic Science. Fiber One now makes cookies. Find them in the cookie aisle. We have a lot of mouths to feed. Fortunately, PetSmart has a wide assortment of foods for us to choose from. Mitzi has a little bit of a sensitive stomach. Can you smell it? PetSmart has the food choices to fit your kids' needs, like Nutro with natural nutrition and guaranteed health benefits. Because Pethood needs a partner. Hmm. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Everybody knows that, Parker. Well... Did you know auctioneers make bad grocery store clerks? It'll be twenty-three fifty. Now seventy-five, twenty-three seventy-five. Hold them, hey, to get down twenty-three seventy-five. Twenty-four, hey, twenty-four dollar, twenty-four and a quarter, quarter. Now half, twenty-four and a half and seventy-five and twenty-five. Now a quarter, hey, twenty-six and a quarter. Hold them, hey, to get down twenty. You want to do it? Five and a quarter. Sold to the man in the khaki jacket. Geico. Fifteen minutes could save you fifteen percent or more on car insurance. Sometimes bigger is better, but other times bigger just gets in the way. At Brother, we know the biggest printer isn't always the best fit for every office. So we've come up with a bigger idea. Don't supersize, optimize. See how we can help you put the right printers in all the right places and help reduce your costs. Now that's big. Brother, at your side. Learn more at don'tsupersizeoptimize.com. All right, so this Tylenol arthritis lasts eight hours, but Aleve can last 12 hours. And Aleve is proven to work better on pain than Tylenol arthritis. So why am I still thinking about this? How are you? Get Aleve, proven better on pain. Take Zequel and sleep like the kids went to Nana's house for the whole weekend. Zequel, the non-habit-forming sleep aid that helps you sleep easily and wake refreshed because sleep is a beautiful thing. Monday, the brightest kids in America compete in the nation's premier science fair. Sam Champion is live from the White House, Monday on AMHQ. Currently in our area, 77 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Today, partly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible late. High, 90. Winds south at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Tonight, cloudy intervals. Low, 68. Winds southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Monday, mostly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. High, 89. Winds southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here's our seven-day outlook. Yeah, we're gonna World number one, Rory McIlroy. And the PGA Tour's biggest stars take center stage in the King's Backyard. The Arno Palmer Invitational, presented by MasterCard. Today at 12.30 on Golf Channel. Could we see the first tornadoes for this month of March this week? If we make it to Monday with no tornadoes, our severe weather expert, Dr. Greg Forbes, will, he says it could be, it will be, a new record for the month of March. The threat really starts Monday night in through the central plains, that includes Wichita, and then moves into the Mississippi Valley for Tuesday. So cities like Kansas City, St. Louis, you need to be on alert. And as long as records have been kept, we've never gone a march Amazing. without a tornado. And here we are. Just, uh, just over a week away from the end of the month. Well, April and May, the two busiest months, by the way, for tornadoes. So really, now is the time to sit down with your family and make a severe weather plan. That's exactly what I did with my husband and my three boys. As you all know, I'm a meteorologist, but first and foremost, I'm a mom and a wife. And it's so important to me, as a family, when severe weather approaches, we have a plan. Where'd we go when we had our last uh, tornado go through? Where'd we go? Oh, you know? Where, where did we go? In the basement. Why did we go in the basement, you remember? In case 
the tornado really came, then we would be prepared. So we'd end up in here, and the reason why we picked this room, it's in the lowest level. We also have bricks on two walls. And a couple things that we keep here to be storm ready, we have the helmets ready to go. We also have a TV with cable, so we have the tune to the Weather Channel. Have my Weather Channel app on my iPad. And a great tip that I got from Dr. Forbes this season is make sure everyone has shoes, so I've lined up the boots for the boys. Worst case scenario, if the storm got really intense, we have this option of coming into this closet. And we chose this room because it's an interior or closet in our basement room, we would all be together, huddled, safe and sound. Yes, and we've uh, done this a few times with uh, some of the storms that came by, and it's uh, always been good practice for uh, hopefully the real thing that will never happen. And, uh, you know, we practice what we preach here, and that's why, you know, when we tell you these are suggestions of what you need to do in a certain emergency situ situation, we do that ourselves, and that, you know, get to do How that with my kids. How hard was it to, do, to get them to do that, like, the first time or two? Because I, I feel like the kids are like, my mind's too young to yeah. know, but, like, they're annoyed by it. <laughs> no, well, but you then know, it becomes mem muscle memory well, or Well, that too, and, and it's in school, and so, like, my, my oldest, Michael, you know, they do those kinds of drills in school all the time, and he's excited to tell me stuff, like, right. oh, wait a second, you know, we need a, play, a meeting place outside our house. I said, yes, we do. So, you know, you get them involved. And, yes. But it, the, the point is to think about it now when you don't have to. You don't right. want to be thinking about it when you have a tornado watch issue. Because then you're going to panic and you're going to do the right. wrong thing. Right. So having that repetition is probably a very, very good exactly. thing. All right, so there are very safe spots in your home. There are unsafe spots as well. A safe spot, your basement. Being underground is as safe as you can be from a tornado. Storm shelters do provide you a lot of protection. Interior rooms are always a good option as well. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Unsafe places to be mobile homes. Those can be rolled even in just high winds and really are only to code having to withstand winds of 90 miles per hour. A vehicle, not the best place to be. It can offer you some protection, but if you can get to a more stable shelter, please do that. And highway overpasses are never a good place to be. Even though they may protect you from rain and hail, they can funnel the winds of a tornado and actually accelerate them if you stop underneath an overpass. Well, tornado shelters, they've become very popular over the past couple years because of recent significant tornadoes. They are very safe. Underground shelters are best, but above ground shelters can withstand tornado winds as well. Before you install a shelter, though, you may want to consider the tornado shelter guidelines on FEMA's website. Maria? And Mike, I know you tweeted that out earlier, so check that out if you missed that. But we do want to take a closer look at Tuesday's severe weather and kind of give you that heads up because we can do that now and we're starting to see those ingredients come together. So again, have a, a way to get those warnings. Think about that now. Think about that today. So we're going to start with the Torcon. We haven't seen this map in a long time, right? A 3 out of 10 here for eastern Oklahoma, central Missouri, northwest Arkansas. That means a 3 in 10 chance within 50 miles of that area of seeing a tornado. Now on a scale of 1 to 10, it's on the lower end, but it's not zero. So we have to really start paying attention here. We have all the ingredients, right? The warmth, the moisture coming up from the Gulf of Mexico. You have the cold front and that jet stream where the higher level winds are, are going in a different direction. And so you get a little bit of that spin. And so that's why we're seeing enhanced risk here. From Kansas City, St. Louis down to Fort Smith, eastern Oklahoma, all those areas seeing sh showers and thunderstorms by as early as Monday night into Tuesday, but certainly Tuesday where we kind of see really everything come together. Springfield down to Fort Smith again, eastern Oklahoma in particular. Damaging winds, a real threat, but also that heavy rain. And Kansas City, again, prime time looking late Monday into Tuesday, Mike. Maria, thank you. Up next, the seven day stretch. Uh, the weather for your hometown. You can't predict the market, but at TVRO Price, we've helped guide our clients through good times and bad. Our experienced investment professionals are one reason over 85% of our mutual funds beat their 10 year Lipper averages. So in a variety of markets, we can help you feel confident. Request a prospectus or summary prospectus with investment information, risks, fees, and expenses to read and consider carefully before investing. Call us or your advisor. T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. The Yamaha Viking and introducing the all-new Viking 6. The hardest working, most off-road capable side-by-sides in America. Built for the hardest working people on earth. You.
The Fiat 500 isn't alone anymore. It's part of a big Italian family. It tastes better when you grow it. It tastes even better when you share it. It's not hard. It's doable. It's growable. Get going with growables. miracle Grow. Life starts here. Whatever their stickers say, they'll all lose suction because their filters clog. But with our sonic tips oscillating at 5,000 hertz, only new Dyson Kinetic Science won't lose suction. At the end of the day, my hands are beat up. Especially during the winter times, hands are splitting, cracking, making it very difficult to do my job. O'Keefe's Working Hands. Guaranteed relief for dry hands that crack and split. Best stuff we've ever used. It just works. Learn more at workinghands.com. You know you're going to go out in bad weather. We're willing to take a lot of risk. He has no heartbeat, he's got no pulse. These people are counting on us. So let's go! I've never been so terrified. When you go out there, it's dangerous. Family. They're the ones who keep us warm inside. Making us smile on a rough day. A part of our memories, both small and big. And through the years, natural gas appliances are there for you, just like family. Extend your family with reliable, energy-saving natural gas appliances and get up to $1,750 cash back when you switch. Florida Public Utilities. Feel the love. If you're not happy with how your allergy medicine treats your congestion, rethink relief with Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour. Unlike antihistamines that target only one cause of your symptoms, Nasacort stops more, relieving the worst nasal allergy symptoms, even congestion, for 24 hours. It's non-addictive and has no harsh taste, and unlike Flonase, it's scent and alcohol-free. And it's available over-the-counter at full prescription strength. Rethink your relief with Nasacort. It stops more of what makes you miserable. Blood to learn more. Monday, the brightest kids in America compete in the nation's premier science fair. Sam Champion is live from the White House, Monday on AMHQ. Currently in our area, 79 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Today, partly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible late. High, 90. Winds south at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Tonight, cloudy intervals. Low, 68. Winds southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Monday, mostly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. High, 89. Winds southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here's our seven-day outlook. Welcome back, everyone. You know, if you're a skier, great conditions at Eldora Mountain Resort in Colorado this weekend. Look Woo. at that skier go! The packed powder isn't keeping them from doing any jumps or tricks, and the resort has a base of more than 50 inches, so, you know, they got a little ways to go there for the spring skiing. What did we ever do before the invention of the wearable <laughs> camera? Like, oh I gosh. feel like our lives we were, were totally just... Bored. We were totally bored before the GoPro, right? <laughs> Alright, there's a look at the forecast. Actually pretty mild. You'll need that sunscreen for sure. Uh, temperatures upper 40s to low 50s next couple of days. Yeah, you don't want that embarrassing, you know, ski mask yes. tan line. Yeah, you, right. look like, uh, you look like <laughs> well, a total tourist. If exactly. You, you don't exactly. want to be that guy, right? <laughs> Alright, so let's get you through the next seven days and it gets you that seven a stretch showing you a lot of things on the map, including today, some opportunities for rain across the south and some severe weather right along the Gulf Coast. All right, so that's today. We're also tracking snow today. Minneapolis for you. That clipper is coming on through. Haven't seen a ton this morning, but it's not done yet. As you take a live look right now, you've been in sort of this little dry pocket, uh, but you've got maybe as much as three to five inches, especially
especially the south side of town, uh, of snow there expected by the end of this, but two feet below average for the season. And I think our biggest single snowstorm this year was only roughly four inches, right. so we could rival that. that. And here yeah. it is, uh, late March. Uh, some of that snow on the move Monday into Chicago could impact your morning drive. Severe weather now impacts us in the peninsula of Florida, including Tampa as well as Orlando. And speaking of Chicago, there you go. Here too, a kind of an interesting snow season for you. 44 inches as of, I think, yesterday, and you were at this point last year about 80 inches. So, Woo. yeah. So, so what you're saying is this winter's been half as good as last winter. Or half as bad. <laughs> That's Whatever. It. All right, so let's take you into Tuesday now. We replace a lot of that snow with some rain. And then we've got some issues across the northwest. And that uh, means some mountain snow, higher elevation. See the pink, a little bit of both there. And some rain as well. Pretty unsettled in the Pacific Northwest. But it's still a sign that you get some cold air in there. In fact, our, our Dr. Greg Postel weighs in on the chill. Right, and then Tuesday night, there's a chance for some winter weather in the northern plains, the Great Lakes, the upper Midwest, a rain mixed with snow from about Minneapolis on northward, and then it gets even colder for us on Wednesday in that part of the country. So winter hanging on in actually places that didn't see a whole lot of it this season are now getting a taste of it. Back to you. Thanks, Greg. Yep, the Twin Cities definitely in that. And here we go again, another return to that on Wednesday. A lot of showers in the east from really northern um, New England all the way down through the Red River Valley. And so we were talking, uh, you know, focusing on Tuesday's spring storm with a severe threat. By Wednesday, you still have cities like St. Louis that are going to be seeing the rain. You don't have it today. Look at this, some beautiful sunshine. Uh, but again, the stormy weather is going to be moving in by the middle of the week. Oh, remarkable St. Louis and everyone getting really excited for Cardinal baseball. <laughs> We go late in the week then we bring in some more showers into the forecast Maine all the way down to the Gulf Coast including South Texas but notice this time it's rain not snow in New England so it's getting warm enough to be spring like precip and you want to talk about spring like how about west of the Mississippi here you know Denver you've been uh, fairly quiet you've had a few warm days you got 57 here on Thursday 61 in Billings but take a look Los Angeles pushing 90 again and you've got even Phoenix above average at 92 amazing to see some of the heat we've had in the West, but that chill does make its comeback mm -hmm. and it is felt here in the northeast. It's going to take you into late week, including now Friday. What is that right there? <laughs> Snow in Buffalo? Get out of here. <laughs> it's going to happen today. Oh, just enjoy oh, the end beautiful. of your weekend. Look at those beautiful bluebird blue skies. A great way to end your weekend. Uh, but we are starting the weekend with a bit of a chill here. We're taking a look at Saturday. Highs only in the 30s. Boston low 40s for you in New York, even in Chicago and Minneapolis. 40s. And I look at this. Well, yeah. There's a colorful There's map that. here in North Carolina. Could be looking at a wintry mix around Raleigh. It's too late for that. The rest of the country, though, pretty quiet to start next weekend. Well, right now, we are tracking rain, thunderstorms across the south, and that's happening right now. All right, so the targets could be places like Pensacola and Destin and Crestview. Are you there on uh, spring break right now? Heads up. We'll keep you ahead of the danger when Weekend Recharge returns. Weather in Play brought to you by Audi, proud sponsor of the U.S. Ski Team. Grandpa Bodie, Grandma said you used to be out of control. Really? I guess I did take some risks. I trained a little bit differently. I was a little too honest sometimes. The media is useless. You were out of control. But not always. take beauty into my own hands. Olay Regenerist. It regenerates surface cells. New skin is revealed in only five days. Without drastic measures. Stunningly youthful, award-winning skin. From the world's number one, Olay. Your best beautiful. After years of being treated like she was invisible, it occurred to Mindy she might actually be invisible. But Mindy was actually not invisible. Ooh, what are you doing? Can you see me? Yeah. She had just always been treated that you way. You don't look at me like that. There are worse things than an attractive woman touching your body. Okay. Join the nation that sees you as a priority. Nationwide is on your side. Doing this all day? My feet and legs got really tired. So I got Dr. Show's massaging gel work insoles. They absorb the shock of working on my feet all day. I feel energized. I'm a believer. Dr. Show's massaging gel work insoles. I'm a Waiting quietly, the key to everything. A magic formula of protein and grain. The sun will come out tomorrow. 
Tomorrow is yours to claim. Kellogg's. See you at breakfast. It took James Dyson 5,000 prototypes to invent the bagless vacuum. And another 10,000 to invent the only vacuum that doesn't lose suction. Thanks to patented sonic tips. Everything else is history. Search Kinetic now. I always dreamed of coming here. When my asthma symptoms returned, my doctor prescribed Dulera to help prevent them. Dulera is for patients 12 and older whose asthma is not well controlled on a long-term asthma control medicine, like an inhaled corticosteroid. Dulera will not replace a rescue inhaler for sudden symptoms. A six-month clinical study has shown Dulera helps significantly improve lung function. Dulera contains formoterol, which increases the risk of death from asthma problems and may increase the risk of hospitalization in children and adolescents. Dulera is not for people whose asthma is well controlled with a long-term asthma control medicine, like an inhaled corticosteroid. Once your asthma is well controlled, your doctor will decide if you can stop Dulera and prescribe a different asthma control medicine, like an inhaled corticosteroid. Do not take Dulera more than prescribed. See your doctor if your asthma does not improve or gets worse. Ask your doctor about Dulera. You know those neighbors always making weird inventions out of junk in their garage? We just gave them their own TV show. Oh, oh! Come on, wind! I think I just made Mother Nature my bed. <laughs> One man's trash. This is perfect. There's another man's wood-powered Jeep gasifier. <laughs> Brainstormers, premiering tonight at 9, only on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 79 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Today, partly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible late. High, 90. Winds south at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Tonight, cloudy intervals. Monday, mostly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. High, 89. Winds southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here's our seven-day outlook. Monday, the brightest kids in America compete in the nation's premier science fair. Sam Champion is live from the White House, Monday on AMHQ. It is 30 past the hour. You're watching Weekend Recharge. So glad you can join us and spend part of your Sunday with us. I'm Maria LaRosa. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Mike Bettis. What better way to find out what's going on in other communities and find out what's going on in the newspaper? All right, let's check out some headlines. Weather always seems to make it on the front page, right, somewhere. Uh, take a look at this. The front page of the reporter in Lansdale, Pennsylvania, outside Philly. Spring thaw, it goes... On to say, in a, like a lion, spring's arrival was a winter redo, but warmer times lie ahead. Out like a lamb, warmer temperatures expected to bring a meltdown this week. I like how I like when it works out as scripted, right? Mm -hmm. uh, hey, let's take a look at the uh, Lebanon Daily News. Potholes begin to sprout again. Motorists encouraged to report roads that need repairs. That looks like a, oh. a deflated tire. Oof. Kind of like your emotions right now <laughs> right, when you do totally that. Oh, uh. yeah, yeah. And lastly, what about some fishing in the rain here on the front page of the Lufkin News? It reads, rain doesn't dampen fishing festivities in Lufkin, Texas. So that's good. Get Isn't that kind of good, the cloudy weather for fishing, or am I wrong? Why? Yeah, it can be. Yeah, right. It can be. For uh, why, why are, why, we are a wussified society. Like, as soon as it rains or snows, we're like, I'm not going outside. Well, like, what did we do 100 years ago? Or what did we do 200 years ago? We didn't have, like, what we have now. Like, we are a wussified society. Oh, my goodness. Go outside and go fish. Back in my day. <laughs> Am I showing my age? Is that, is that? Old man, get off my lawn. <laughs> All right. 
Oh, all right, I'm but done. you know, I'm done. you're done? Yeah, Are we done? Yeah, okay, yes. and <laughs> top three now. Let's take a look at what we'll be covering here. The Sunday storm's definitely a big topic today because, uh, you know, you've got a lot of things going on. Sunday services, maybe some soccer games, that moist flow off the Gulf of Mexico, uh, really putting out and putting down some good rainfall here across the southeast. We're talking already one to two inches in spots. That'll keep going today. Still going strong, at least a, a little bit right now, is that clipper bringing snow to the Minneapolis area, eventually moving into you, Chicago, by tomorrow morning. We'll talk about how that's going to affect your morning rush. And then next week's spring storm, yeah, shaping up on Tuesday to bring some severe weather, at least a threat of it. Fort Smith, Springfield, St. Louis in on that orange color as well. So we'll kind of dig deeper in there, including that tornado threat. It has been a while. A few things to brush up on here. Meanwhile, uh, across the south, it's certainly been a soggy Sunday. Cloudy skies starting you this morning in New Orleans. Rain, rumble of thunder, uh, not out of the question this afternoon. Kind of the same situation in Auburn, Alabama. Not much rain now, but those thunderstorms will be rolling in by this afternoon, too. And Panama City, uh, I should say Panama City Beach, a uh, cloudy day for you beachgoers. Showers and a few thunderstorms, too, including severe weather possible. Not only seeing severe weather today, Mike. Indeed, we're watching for some thunderstorms already this morning. So a lot of rain and thunderstorms in our forecast right along the Gulf Coast. So this morning, this is what you are dealing with from Pensacola over toward Destin, Crestview, Freeport. Freeport. We have showers and thunderstorms. In fact, one to two inches of rain already falling with some of these uh, embedded boomers. So just keep that in mind. Once these storms pass, get back out there, but not a good time to be on the beach right now. There's a look at the showers. Really wet for you. Right back through Mississippi and Arkansas, especially here, Jackson to Tupelo. Some particularly strong downpours here, so keep that in mind. Might have some hydroplaning on the roadways. Just take it slow. Just pump those brakes every now and then to dry them out if you can do so safely. All right, there's a look at the forecast as we roll through time today. Notice the showers and storms really pre prevalent across much of the south. They get going through the afternoon as well with some daytime heating, increasing the instability in the atmosphere. So New Orleans over toward Montgomery, even tonight, maybe around sunset or just after you'll see some thunderstorms developing here southern Alabama and then South Georgia as well that goes right into Savannah by tonight you're trying to get to sleep or you're watching the late news 11 o'clock tonight very heavy rain coming for you in Savannah there's a look at today's severe weather threat Highlighted in red, the greatest risk for severe weather, that'll be New Orleans and likely north of Lake Pontchartrain over towards, say, Pascagoula, Mobile, into Panama City, watching for those storms that could contain some small hail. On Monday, now notice that that threat has shifted into the peninsula of Florida. So the big bend of Florida, Tampa, St. Pete, down towards Sarasota, over toward Orlando, right along I-4, you'll have some issues, and then garden variety showers north of there along I-75 into Georgia. Still to come, another inch of rain for many of you. Some larger areas here and you can see this highlighted in a darker green color that's a one to two inch rainfall for you that could be Atlanta down towards Savannah and then the low country of South Carolina as well New Orleans there's our forecast we have thunderstorms coming your way today look for high temperature rate right around 80 degrees so a lot of people out there on the camera so for now you're good they come in later on today 71 tomorrow with cloudy skies we'll do upper 70s on Tuesday how about your forecast in Panama City very similar forecast thunderstorms today some of those could contain uh, enough large larger hail maybe just large enough to be a severe thunderstorm warning but once that goes by we're good Monday and Tuesday temperatures back into the upper 70s and we're looking to be out there on the beach once again. It is spring break after all, Maria. It is, and what's interesting, you've got Panama City, but Orlando today, it looks like the rain and storms will stay away, but it will be hot for the final round of the Arnold Palmer Invitational. The Golf Channel's Damon Hack, no, now from Bay Hill in Orlando. Thank you very much. It's Championship Sunday at the Arnold Palmer Invitational at Bay Hill Club and Lodge in Orlando, Florida. Henrik Stenson with a two-shot lead going into this final round. Temperatures today expected to reach 90 degrees, very similar to Saturday. Expect the players to be patient, also to hydrate, and also notice the clothes that they wear. Very light fabric today. You want to be loose. You want to be comfortable. You want to be hydrated, and when you want to chase that championship trophy, as Henrik Stenson wants to do, you want to make sure you're in the most comfortable position possible. Another warm day typical of Central Florida as we send it back to our good friends at the Weather Channel. And Davis did it right. He's got a light colored shirt on. He's ready. He's doing it. He's leading by example, mm -hmm. right? How about that forecast? Final round today. Temperature almost 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. Everyone traveling home maybe on Monday watching for some thunderstorms in about 83 degrees. A lot of players will fly out on Monday, especially those that have played uh, late rounds. Mm -hmm. um, all in all, 
like you said, do your best to battle the heat today. Exactly. Those even those morning temperatures out in the 60s. Well, a lot more still to come on weekend recharge. Including putting our eyes in the Midwest. Spring storm could bring some severe weather earlier this week from Iowa to Oklahoma. We time it out next right here on Recharge. True Green presents the yard lease. <laughs> Hello. You did? You tell me. You really? <laughs> Ding dong. Oh, the pizza's here. Oh, hey, come on in. Right. Whoa! Lose the sneakers, pal. <laughs> kind of a thing. This is more than a lawn. This is a True Green lawn. Sorry. Live life outside with True Green, America's number one lawn care company. Spring is on. Start your True Green lawn plan today. Bye now. True Green. Live life outside. Start your True Green lawn plan today. True Green. Live life outside. Whatever their stickers say, they'll all lose suction because... Their filters clog, but with our sonic tips oscillating at 5,000 hertz, only new Dyson Kinetic Science won't lose suction. Can a protein originally found in a jellyfish improve your memory? Our scientists say yes. Researchers have discovered a protein that actually supports healthier brain function. It's the breakthrough in a supplement called Prevagen. As we age, we lose proteins that support our brain. Prevagen supplements these proteins and has been clinically shown to improve memory. It's safe and effective. For support of healthier brain function, a sharper mind, and clearer thinking, try Prevagen for yourself today. Sensitive bladder? Try new Always Discreet. Up to 40% thinner for superior comfort. Absorbs two times more than you may need. No wonder more women already prefer new Always Discreet pads over poise. Visit alwaysdiscreet.com for coupons and to learn more. Olive Garden's buy one, take one, starting at $12.99. Enjoy warm breadsticks, salad, and your choice of irresistible entrees, like new citrus chicken Sorrento. Then take home another entree free. Buy one, take one, starting at $12.99 at Olive Garden. Sometimes, bigger is better. But other times, bigger just gets in the way. At Brother, we know the biggest printer isn't always the best fit for every office. So we've come up with a bigger idea. Don't supersize, optimize. See how we can help you put the right printers in all the right places and help reduce your costs. Now that's big. Brother, at your side. Learn more at don'tsupersizeoptimize.com. Get fast-acting, long-lasting relief from heartburn with doctor-recommended Gaviscon. It neutralizes stomach acid and is the only product that forms a protective barrier that helps keep stomach acid in the stomach where it belongs. For fast-acting, long-lasting relief, try Gaviscon. Once upon a time, there was a nice house that lived with a family. One day, it started to rain and rain. Water got inside and ruined everybody's everything. The house thought she let the family down. But the family just didn't think a flood could ever happen. The reality is, floods do happen. Protect what matters. Get flood insurance. Call 888-RAIN-383 to learn more. Currently in our area, 80 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Today, partly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible late. High, 90. Winds south at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Tonight, cloudy intervals. Low, 68. Winds southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Monday, mostly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. High, 89. Winds southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here's our seven-day outlook. Could we be seeing the first tornadoes for the month of March this week? 
Well, if we make it to Monday with no tornadoes, our severe weather expert, Dr. Greg Forbes, says it will be a new record for the month of March. That threat really starts Monday night in through the central plain. So Wichita, that includes you, and then moves into the Mississippi Valley for Tuesday. So Kansas City, St. Louis, we're talking about you. Now, Joplin, Missouri, Moore, Oklahoma, two of the most devastating tornadoes in recent history, are etched in the mind of Tad Agolia, founder of the First Response Team of America. His team was on hand in both cities, and today he looks back at the enduring memories he took away from those two storms. I've traveled the country responding to over 70 communities hit hard by natural disasters. Many of the people I've helped actually captured our work in pictures. And behind each image is an amazing story. Responding to disasters can be extremely heartbreaking. There's one photo taken in Moore, Oklahoma that really captures the challenges. This picture here is of the team members working on a huge pile of rubble that used to be the elementary school, knowing that there was children in here. There's desks, there's teddy bears and toys, and there's there's books. These photos just provide so much contrast of what a child's life should be like and how this tornado really destroyed so much. So this is probably one of the most difficult experiences I ever had in responding to a tornado. One picture that speaks a lot to me was taken in Joplin, Missouri after an extremely powerful tornado went through that community. I kept on hearing about this church that was completely destroyed, but the cross was still standing in front of it, perfectly vertical. This here is a statue of Jesus, and I was talking to some of the construction workers at the hospital, and they were saying that the tornado was so powerful that it actually spun the nuts off, but somehow the statue of Jesus was still there. These are the kind of things you'll, you'll see in the aftermath of tornadoes that there's just real no way to explain it. People's faiths are tested, and it's things like this that give people comfort and hope and strength for the long journey ahead. Today, I finally took the time to look back and to remember all the storms, all the faces, all those stories, and it makes me proud to be a part of the first response team. I'm proud of the work we've done. They've come a very long way in Moore and in Joplin and a huge milestone achieved today in Joplin, Missouri. I mean, take a look. Mercy Hospital cost close to half a billion dollars and it's on its way to opening today. How about that? Builders say it'll now be better prepared to and equipped to withstand tornado winds, including winds in the ER and the intensive care units that can withstand 250 mile per hour winds the 2011 tornado, as you might recall, killed mm -hmm. five patients and one visitor when it struck the former St. John Regional Medical Center, which was basically right in town, was right in a residential area. Mm -hmm. This is now over along I-44. It's a big, beautiful facility, and uh, wow, what a proud moment for Joplin today. And, and you, you think about four years literally being just a blip on the radar and, and how much and how far they've come with Structurally, right? Right. You you were there on the ground, yeah. and emotionally, you know, it's still with this, them. Uh, this really helps. So yeah. seeing stuff like this just puts a smile on your face, and right. that city coming back bigger and stronger than ever. We look at the severe weather threat that we do have because it does include places like Missouri this week. In fact, tornadoes could threaten. We haven't had any tornadoes at all in the month of March so far. That's right. So we're going to take a look, and uh, one of those spots, uh, kind of in that area of concern, eastern Oklahoma, central Missouri, and northwest Arkansas. So uh, the the main threat here going to be the damaging wind threat, but also that possibility of a tornado. We want to get, make sure you're aware, so if you do hear that warning, you know what to do. Warmth, moisture, all part of the recipe here. We also have those upper level winds in a different direction, so that's what's leading to the possibility of some of that rotation. Aside from that, you have drenching thunderstorms, definitely in the forecast here. You've got Kansas City, St. Louis, down to Fort Smith, Des Moines, and looking at some uh, rainfall on that side as well. Potential mm -hmm. impacts from St. Louis, the spotty damaging winds. Again, if so, if you don't even hear the tornado siren, that is enough to do some damage. Uh, it's been a while since we've had to deal with this type of situation, so think now uh, about your plans and if maybe you have to change them. Wichita, we are watching you. Monday night, stormy night for you, and then windy but drier on Tuesday, Mike. All right, Maria, thank you. We're going to step away here for just a couple of seconds. Before we go, though, how about a little weather in play, including the forecast for Snowshoe, West Virginia. Are you skiing? Temperatures in the 40s the next two days.
Responding by storm, powered by Ram trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. In a work, work, work world. Take time for Sunday. Just know that your truck has a little thing for Monday. Thanks for this Oreo caramel shake, Kara. Caramel for Kara, that yeah. makes sense. And uh, Janine for peanut butter. I don't get it, why? Because she reminds me of my ex-girlfriend Janine, who was nuts. <laughs> 25 real ice cream shakes, all half price after 8 p.m. This is how you sonic. Introducing the new Can-Am Spider F3. With a cruising riding position and the most advanced vehicle stability system in the industry, you'll ride with a feeling of complete freedom and confidence. Visit your Can-Am dealer and test drive the Spider F3 today. It took James Dyson 5,000 prototypes to invent the bagless vacuum. And another 10,000 to invent the only vacuum that doesn't lose suction. Thanks to patented sonic tips. Everything else is history. Search Kinetic now. Round up. I'm the protector of my patio. Killing weeds where they grow. A barrier form so weeds can't appear. Serious weed prevention up to a year. Roundup Max Control 365. So I'm fighting weeds on opening day and preventing weeds while I get away. Weeds stay dead as we carve this beast and they still aren't back when I cook this feast. Roundup Max Control 365. Yeah. One more time, let me make it clear. With no more weeds, it's your year. Monday, the brightest kids in America compete in the nation's premier science fair. Sam Champion is live from the White House, Monday on AM. It makes me happy to go on the computer. I like feeling smart. Internet Essentials from Comcast has brought low-cost internet access to over 1.4 million low-income people at home. Internet Essentials help me progress in my schoolwork. It helped my grades move higher. Today, it's the largest broadband adoption program in America. It helped me a lot. Comcast NBC Universal, helping to bridge the digital divide. If you're not happy with how your allergy medicine treats your congestion, rethink relief with Nasacort Allergy 24 Hour. Unlike antihistamines that target only one cause of your symptoms, Nasacort stops more, relieving the worst nasal allergy symptoms, even congestion, for 24 hours. It's non addictive and has no harsh taste, and unlike Flonase, it's scent and alcohol free. And it's available over the counter at full prescription strength. Rethink your relief with Nasacort. It stops more of what makes you miserable. Com slash TV. Currently in our area, 80 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Today, partly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible late. High, 90. Winds south at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Tonight, cloudy intervals, low 68. Winds southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Monday, mostly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. High 89. Winds southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here's our seven day outlook. Welcome back into Weekend Recharge, and it is the first full weekend of spring. We have a little bit of snow to talk about. It's a quick moving clipper that's already brought snow to parts of Minneapolis in a snow drought, actually. But here's the, basically the train track. You have the jet stream cold air to, on one side of it, plenty of moisture, just enough, actually, to turn in, in, into some snow. But as it races quickly into the Midwest and the Great Lakes, it's going to be a situation for Minneapolis today. But by tomorrow, we're talking about you, Chicago. So let's kind of do more specific time 
behind me. Here you have uh, this evening still potential uh, snowfall here from Minneapolis to Eau Claire. If you're riding down I-94, uh, you're going to be seeing that snow kind of follow you, generally on the light side, but still. And then there you go, a morning drive for you, Chicago. Basically between I-94 and I-80 will be a little bit tricky, so you may want to hurry up your morning routine or start to uh, start to setting that alarm clock a little early already. But take a look at the potential snowfall here. You've got uh, five to eight inches in that area in purple that includes just to the south of La Crosse, maybe as much as one to three in and around Chicagoland and northern um, Illinois, southern Wisconsin, you have uh, an area of three to five inches. So quick moving, yes, but just enough to keep things a little interesting here as we get into Monday. Well, speaking of interesting, we want to tap into your inner adventurer this morning. And the best part, you ready for it? You don't have to leave your couch. I don't know if that's the best part or not, right? Score, maybe? <laughs> yeah, the National Geographic travel team is out with a book called Abroad at Home, the 600 Best International Travel Experiences in North America. I love this idea. I All love right, it. So the introduction, written by a gentleman, Robert Reed, known as the Offbeat Observer, uh, Nat <laughs> Geo, jo joining us this morning. Robert, good morning to you. Tell us about this book, Abroad at Home. It seems like such a great concept. Well, it is. It's about the 600 international experiences you can have around the United States and into Canada. So you may have to leave your, your couch to experience some <laughs> of them, but basically how, how much diversity and wonder and, and surprises that you find around the country. Uh, you know, Boise, Idaho is the, is the capital of Basque America. The biggest Hindu temple outside of India is near Atlanta in a, in a suburb of Lilburn. And there's all these kinds of things, little pockets of, you know, the Filipino population in Vegas is booming. There's a Peruvian town of Patterson, New Jersey, that you can go from New York just for a day trip and have Peruvian chicken. It's about all these different surprises around the country to, as kind of a tool for a, the ultimate road trip, I guess, around the country. And so real quick, what are some of your favorite destinations? I know you just named some great mm -hmm. ones. I really like the, the very corner of the United States. Up in Maine, Aristotle County is a home to Acadian culture. And if you think of the Cajuns in Louisiana and kind of this French kind of culture that you see there, actually before they moved there, they were in Maine, and they're still there. And so you go there, and there's French language and lots of food uh, and a, a festival in August. And I really was surprised by Aristotle County up on the New Brunswick border. Robert Reed joining us this morning. The book is Abroad at Home. Home you can it. read it from your couch, <laughs> but right. maybe do some of the things that are in it. Robert, thank you for joining us. <laughs> and make plans for your couch. I love that. Getting to know your immediate area mm -hmm. is so worth it. This country's fabulous. It truly is. All right. Amazing time left of the night sky over Haleakala National Park in Hawaii. It's coming up next. Stick around for it. Whatever their stickers say, they'll all lose suction because... Their filters clog, but with our sonic tips oscillating at 5,000 hertz, only new Dyson Kinetic Science won't lose suction. Alaska. It's the place you've always dreamed of, where the ordinary is simply extraordinary, and the views, like your memories, go on forever. When was the last time a vacation took your breath away? Alaska. Begin your adventure at alaskabeyondyourdreams.com. Your relationship with your dog is pure. It's innocent. It's work, but it's perfect. You wouldn't trade it for the world. So protect your dog with Trifexis. Trifexis is the monthly beef flavored tablet that prevents heartworm disease, kills fleas, and prevents infestations, and treats and controls hook, round, and whipworm infections. Treatment with fewer than three monthly doses after exposure to mosquitoes may not provide complete heartworm prevention. The most common adverse reactions were vomiting, depression, and itching. Serious adverse reactions have been reported following concurrent extra-label use of ivermectin with spinosad, one of the components of Trifexis. Prior to administration, dogs should be tested for existing heartworm infection. You'll take it all, the good and the bad, because that's what makes your relationship irreplaceable. Protect your dog all year long with the three-in-one power of Trifexis, available by prescription only. Talk to your veterinarian about how to protect every second you share together. My husband said you're beautiful and I love you, but I'm worried about your health and your weight. I'm worried we're going to lose you. That was my moment. When your moment comes, you can count, track, and worry over every meal. Or you can lose weight simply 
with Jenny Craig. Just walk in or call. Meet your dedicated personal consultant who helps you reach your goals. Pick out delicious food and start losing now. Visit JennyCraig.com for our best offer ever. A moment can change your whole life with Jenny Craig. But now, let's, let's put this out here. I'm getting soaked. We're getting a good heavy hit of rain. We have been shattering records. Look at this, Sam. Thanks for watching AMHQ and helping to make us the fastest growing major network on cable. AMHQ on the Weather Channel. You weren't expecting answer. that, were you? No, I wasn't. Monday, the brightest kids in America compete in the nation's premier science fair. Sam Champion is live from the White House, Monday on AMHQ. All right, amazing time lapse of the night sky over Haleakala National Park in Hawaii by Chris Arch. This is truly stunning. This is on the island of Maui, and if you don't know anything about Haleakala, they have all these observatories at mm. the top. The sky is gorgeous mm. there. There's no light pollution, which is You're so key. You're above it all. You're above it all. Just absolutely stunning. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing mm. it with us, and hopefully you're enjoying it as well. Cool stuff. Okay, but we have, uh, weather-wise, a two-sided storm to deal with. This time of year, you, you have it. It's a typical spring, kind of snowy on one side, severe on the other. Yeah, March is kind of that transition month, and so we're transitioning between seasons. So let's take a look at it. You know, if you go farther north, you'll end up getting in that cold air still this week with that jet stream taking just a bit of a dip here. So North and South Dakota, Minnesota will be in that cold setup and we'll likely see a little bit of snow here. That cold air doesn't really last all that long because we'll go back and forth between snow and then cold rain, then back to a little bit of snow. So it's a month that's really kind of make, trying to make up its mind right now. By Tuesday night, we're back into the snow in Fargo and Minneapolis. Cold rain for you in Milwaukee as well as Chicago. And then you have the stormier side. That setup is there too, the warmth, the moisture, and then that jet stream that's going to help kind of twist everything. And that's why we think there's potential here for not just strong thunderstorms with the gusty damaging winds and hail, but the possibility of tornadoes as well. Uh, we have a three on the Torcon right now for portions of uh, Missouri, also into uh, portions of northern Arkansas. So keep that in mind. Tuesday is the go time. Of course, we'll be on top of it for you right here on the Weather Channel. Now, before we go, I want to tell you that this Wednesday I'll be participating in a Google Hangout that features women in weather. Only about 14% of professionals in atmospheric sciences are women, and that needs to change, right? So the goal of the Hangout is to discuss weather and workforce issues and opportunities and, of course, the weather. Again, this is uh, at uh, on this Wednesday, noon, and you can tweet us using the hashtags extreme weather or like a girl. Boom. Thanks for being here. Way to kill it. By the way. Thank you. I had fun. Weather Geeks, next. Currently in our area, 81 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Today, partly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible late. High, 90. Winds south at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Tonight, cloudy intervals. Monday, mostly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. High, 89. Winds southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here's our seven-day outlook. Welcome to Weather Geeks. Today we're talking about severe weather research and tools. And I've invited out Dr. Harold Brooks from the National Severe Storms Lab and Dr. Patrick Marsh from SPC. Thank you both for joining us. Great to be here. Now look, we know that Norman is the center of the universe for severe weather. NSSL, SPC, National Weather Service. Tell us a little bit about the sort of history and the relationship between the two organizations. Well, back in the mid-1950s when the U.S. Weather Bureau started actually looking at severe thunderstorms and tornadoes, the National Severe Storms Project was started and it had a forecasting branch that was based in Kansas City and every spring a research group would go to Norman because of the old naval air 
uh, training facility that was there that's now the University of Oklahoma Airport, and there was some pioneering weather radar research from Oklahoma A&M, now Oklahoma State, right. that was there. And after several years, because some things happened, and essentially the research group stayed in Norman, became NSSL, the SPC stayed in Kansas City, and then in the mid-1990s, they finally came together uh, so that we could co-locate research and forecasting again. And, and Patrick, yeah, they're, they're co-located now. They're in the Nash, beautiful National Weather Center that I've had a chance to visit. How does that go about the relationship moving forward once you were co-located? A uh, lot of uh, good ideas and, and research projects have taken place, and one of the, the foundational ways that the two groups come together is through what's known as the hazardous weather test bed uh, and an interesting fact the first real research project between it, the National Sphere Storms Laboratory and the Storm Prediction Center was actually a winter weather one. Uh, oh, is that right? It was uh, in the in the mid-90s, uh, just before the Storm Prediction Center moved to Norman, and it was, foca it was focused on uh, convective elements of winter weather and preparing the Storm Prediction Center for issuing winter weather mesoscale discussions. Uh, and the hazardous weather testbed has essentially, has essentially evolved from then, and uh, the National Sphere Storms Lab and Storm Prediction Center now work together. Uh, you, Pretty regularly, uh, yearly, we hold the uh, spring forecast experiment, which has both a, a forecast side with the Storm Prediction Center, a warning side with the National Weather Service office. Uh, and uh, so that's the, the hazardous weather test bed has become a great place for uh, the, the, storm, the Sphere Storms Laboratory to work with both uh, the Storm Prediction Center and the, uh, the, the local forecast office as well. Yeah, and I mean, you're senior scientist at NSSL. I mean, what, what do you do in your day to day? I mean, are you involved in research projects, field campaigns like Vortex, all of the above? Just tell us, give us a sample of what you do. It depends on the day, obviously, sure. just, just, like, just like any other scientist. Sure. Uh, I'm involved in a, in a lot of research things, uh, looking particularly right now at things like severe thunderstorms and climate. Uh, I, after we tape this show, I, I get to go home and I'll have a meeting tomorrow actually with a group from the from the Red Cross mm -hmm. uh, that we're working on trying to build community resiliency in the Hispanic community in Oklahoma City that we hope is a pilot project that goes nationally. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I'll write papers, I'll try to analyze data, I review papers, uh, we go down and we, we, and we have a lot of in sort of informal interaction. I sure. think that's one of the great things about the Weather Center is that we talk to those people and if you're, if you're a researcher, there's probably no better way to get research problems than to talk to forecasters because they have, you know, essentially research problems for you every day. Absolutely. And they ask you what's going on and you say, I don't really understand that. And you go back and you try to learn about it. In terms of NSSL, we kind of heard what uh, Dr. Brooks does. What is your day like at SPC? Uh, I know you're a part of the National Weather Service, so is it more operational or research or a bit of both? Well, kind of like what Harold mentioned, it depends on the day of the, of the week. Uh, some days I'm working on the forecast desk, in which case I can be working anything from winter weather to uh, the traditional severe thunderstorms and tornadoes mm -hmm. to even issuing fire weather forecasts. That, that's surprising. So you guys do do fire weather as well. Yes, uh, we're part of the, we, we coordinate with uh, a lot of the different fire agencies. We issue fire products. Uh, it, it's actually a growing part of our, of our portfolio. Yeah. So one, one of the things that here we are in early 2015, you both are severe weather experts. It's been a bit quiet the last uh, sort of year or so. Tell us about that. Well. Yeah, it's been very quiet. It's not just a bit quiet. It's a been bit very quiet. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and that's why I think one of the big things is that we aren't, at this point, we can't do anything with seasonal forecasting. We don't, we're, we're actually doing some projects. We're trying to work on extending the range of products out maybe to four to six weeks. But our, we cannot kind of say, well, you know, the pattern hasn't been very favorable. But that doesn't really tell us a whole lot, doesn't really help us in a whole lot of forecasting. So we're working on trying to understand that, but it certainly has been very quiet. But we've had some other recent years that have been very, very active. Sure. Now, now Patrick, a lot of people, when we teach this in some of our classes, what's the, the process by which we get from INSEP to the SPC to warnings? Can you talk us a little bit through that? Uh, so uh, the national, if, if you think about the Weather Service structure as a whole, you've got the National Weather Service at the top, and then below that you've got the National Centers for Environmental Prediction, or INSEP. Storm Prediction Center is one of the national centers, and so that's where we, we fit beneath the INSEP umbrella as one of the national centers. We issue the kind of the larger scale, the outlooks, it down to the watches, and at which point then in the severe weather process we hand, hand things over to the forecast offices and they're the ones who are responsible for the warnings. Yeah. Now, NSSL and SPC are both involved in things like Vortex, Vortex 2, and we've been hearing about some follow-on projects as well, which is stimulating some conversation out there in our community as well. 
what is the, what is the role of these organizations, both of your organizations, in things like Vortex Two and some of the? Do you chase, but from a research perspective? No, personally, I don't chase very much from sure. a research perspective. I, I chased a couple of times with Vortex back in the mid 1990s. The National Severe Storms Laboratory's mission is to help improve the forecasts from the National Weather Service, and so that goes on the variety of scales. We have a lot of work. Our natural partner really is the Storm Prediction Center because mm -hmm. we both think nationally, but at the same time, we've done a lot of radar development work. Historically, the biggest thing that NSSL has done has been radar. Doppler radar, the polar metric the radar. The dual pole, for example, that's really around yeah. the country right. now, yeah. upgraded. Yeah. Yeah. Du uh, the dual pole radar is essentially comes as, in some sense being used for operational forecasting, comes out of research out of the lab. Absolutely, sure. And we're already working now on the on the on what we hope is the next generation of radar, phased array radar. Phased array, sure. And that, you know, maybe around 2020 will hopefully be going operational. So the, his the history of the lab, if we look at our biggest accomplishments, has really been improving radar observations so that people can do things. But we also do fundamental research in the field. We uh, pioneered how to collect data out in the field. So Vortex back in 1994 and 1985. And, and, and didn't you forecast some for one of the Vortex? In Vortex 2 in 2009, 2010, I kind of spearheaded the operations center back in Norman and worked with the field and producing forecasts and nowcasts and just keeping, trying to keep everyone safe. You know, and what's the interaction between the academic community in both of your organizations, like say NSSL? Well, I mean, NSSL, one of the great things about being at NSSL is that the University of Oklahoma is in the same building with us. And there are a lot of us, including me, who are affiliate faculty. Yeah. Uh, so we teach, I teach a graduate class every two to three years on, on forecast evaluation. I get to supervise students, including Patrick was one of my master's students. I'm gonna go to, this, uh, I'll pick it up when we get back from the break. But first, can we do anything to improve weather warnings? Are the challenges we face in communicating to non-science audience, can we overcome those? We'll deal with that next, but first, our Geek of the Week, Storm Master Dr. Greg Forbes is our Geek of the Week. Dr. Forbes studied under Ted Fujita and is arguably the world's leading expert on tornadoes. He's a Penn State man and loves both the Nittany Lions and his Steelers. When the super outbreaks of 1974 and 2011 occurred, these left an indelible mark on Dr. Forbes. Our Geek of the Week, Dr. Greg Forbes. Whatever their stickers say, they'll all lose suction because... Their filters clog, but with our sonic tips oscillating at 5,000 hertz, only new Dyson Kinetic Science won't lose suction. Dyson's Kinetic Vacuum, the first upright vacuum with Dyson Kinetic Science. Wow, sweet new Subaru, huh, Mitch? Yep. You're selling the Mitch Mobile? Man, we had a lot of good times in this baby. What's your dad want for it? Like 150 grand. 200 if they want that tape deck. You're not gonna tell your dad about the time my hamster had babies in the back seat, are you? That's just normal wear and tear, dude. Subaru has the highest resale value of any brand, according to Kelly Blue Book and Mitch. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Doing this all night? My feet and legs got really tired. So I got Dr. Show's massaging gel work insoles. They absorb the shock of working on my feet all day. I feel energized. I'm a believer. Dr. Show's massaging gel work insoles. I'm a believer! Monday, the brightest kids in America compete in the nation's premier science fair. Sam Champion is live from the White House, Monday on AMHQ. Currently in our area, 81 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Today, partly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible late. High, 90. Winds south at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Tonight, cloudy intervals, low 68. Winds southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Monday, mostly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. High 89. Winds southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here's our seven day outlook. Monday, the brightest kids in America compete in the nation's premier science fair. Sam Champion is live from the White House, Monday on AMHQ. 
You get sick, you can't breathe through your nose. Suddenly, you're a mouth breather. Well, put on a Breathe Right strip and instantly open your nose up to 38% more than cold medicines alone so you can breathe and sleep. Shut your mouth and sleep right. Breathe Right. Salt and pepper, you tell people to push it. Push it real good. That's what you do. Push it. If you want to save 15% or more on car insurance, you switch to Geico. It's what you do. Push it. I'm pushing. I'm pushing it real good. There's a brilliant luster hiding behind that tarnish, and Tarnex Tarnish Remover is the ideal way to let it shine. A quick dip or a simple wipe will restore your tarnished and dull silver and silver plate, gold, copper, platinum, even diamonds, and have them shining with a renewed luster. The wipe and rinse formula eliminates tarnish quickly and easily, and that means more time enjoying your things and less time cleaning them. Tarnex. Quick. Easy. Brilliant. Tarnex branded products are available at these fine retailers. And we are back with two severe weather experts, uh, Patrick Marsh and Harold Brooks. Now, I know both of you are very active in social media. What are the challenges and opportunities, Patrick, with using social media and in, in, from this perspective of severe uh, weather forecasting and understanding? Well, there are a couple, there are two big challenges. The first one is credibility. Uh, there are a lot of people now out there tweeting and posting uh, graphics and forecasts. And so knowing who's reputable and who might not be so reputable, uh, that's probably the, the first big challenge. Sure. The next one is Keeping up to date with current information, severe weather information changes so rapidly and so fast that if you don't put a timestamp in it, chances are you may retweet something about a tornado warning and the tornado warning is two to three hours old, in which case you may be causing more harm than good. Well, and, and you just said tweet, so clearly Twitter in your mind is better than Facebook where you have to find things in your news feed, is that yeah, right? And my, my opinion, Twitter is better for the dissemination rapidly because you don't have to be friends, you don't have to go like and subscribe, it's not going to get ordered incorrectly. You can just scroll through the timeline and get the information as it occurs. Yeah, and, and, and Harold, I know you're active as well. What are your thoughts? Well, I think one of the things is that, particularly when I try to think about my colleagues in the National Weather Service, is how we can best use Twitter. And we did some. We did a study last year uh, with one of our summer students who actually came to Norman uh, and looked at how Twitter had sort of propagated on a couple of big tornado events in 2013. And we now have an experiment we're working to design to actually essentially test, if you think of Twitter as being a, a sentence, how What's the grammar of that sentence? If you order things in one way or another way, does right. do those things get passed around better or right. worse? Right. And how can we actually essentially manipulate it to get the information out in the best way? Right. Now let's let's talk about uncertainty. Uncertainty is a big word in various uh, places in weather. How do you convey uncertainty? What are your thoughts on conveying uncertainty? When we're talking about weather, a severe weather warning, forecast, outlooks, Patrick, what are your thoughts on uncertainty? Well, I think the first thing that we should do is not be so certain. <laughs> uh, a lot of times you'll see forecasts, social media, actual, if you go to the Weather Service's homepage and whatnot, it's very deterministic. It's this is what is going to happen. Sure. And if that's all we ever do, or if that's primarily what we do, we're never actually going to start educating people saying, hey, you know, there, there's there's a range of possibilities here. This may be the most likely, but there other things could happen. Yeah, but but yeah, and I've heard, I've seen you talk about this in social media, and I know this is a big issue for you. But we know, I think we all would agree with that. But how do we do it? How do we accomplish it? Well, I think we've got, we've got a couple of opportunities uh, that I think we can we can move forward to. One is recognizing that we have a wide variety of audiences, and so what's the appropriate message for one set of folks may not be the appropriate message for other people, and how we actually can convey information to all the groups at one time. There's been some research done that suggested that what audiences really like is essentially an anchor point. This is we think what the most likely event is, and then you go beyond from that anchor point, you establish what you think is are the likely bounds, and that that seems at least for the emergency management community is something they can use for planning purposes. Ah, okay, so that's something that. So there, is there an active partnership? Are you do you have people embedded within SBC or NSSL that are helping this, or are we as meteorologists trying to figure out how to do this? I mean, how how are we doing this? We, we have lots of people that we are interacting with in social. Science community. I think that's been one of the, the big growths in the last several years. Okay. Then uh, we'll pick up on that in the, in the next block here. But next, we are myth busting. Are we seeing more tornadoes and severe storms because of a changing climate? We'll talk to both experts next.
on Weather Geeks. And then what is the largest hailstone ever recorded? We've got some Weather Geeks trivia. Do you know the answer? We'll let you know next after the break. Coast to coast, in every state, people all across the nation are learning something new. That the best way to protect their cars, trucks, and SUVs is with WeatherTech floor liners. They're laser measured to perfectly protect your specific vehicle, front, back, even up the sides. Order yours today at WeatherTech.com or call 1-800-CARMATS. WeatherTech floor liners, proudly made in America. Oh, there's an energy crisis happening, all right. A human one. And it's time to fight it. With the good energy of Quaker Oats. It's how we help keep go-getters like you going and getting. One bite at a time. Try new Quick Steel Cut Oatmeal for a heartier texture. Quaker Up. It took James Dyson 5,000 prototypes to invent the bagless vacuum. And another 10,000 to invent the only vacuum that doesn't lose suction. Thanks to patented sonic tips, everything else is history. Search Kinetic now. Discover Can-Am's wide range of industry-leading vehicles during the Ready to Ride sales event. For a limited time, the Outlander L starts at $59.99. Or get the versatile Commander. The powerful Outlander and the turbocharged Maverick XDS with cash rebates up to $2,000. Don't miss out. Visit your local dealer during the Ready to Ride sales event. Can Am, the ride says it all. But now, let's, let's put this out here. I'm getting soaked. We're getting a good heavy hit of rain. We have been shattering records. Look at this, Sam. Thanks for watching AMHQ and helping to make us the fastest growing major network on cable. AMHQ on the Weather Channel. When you're in pain, an hour seems like a day. A day seems like a month. Resolute Pain Solutions offer same day, next day appointments for evaluation and treatment. Our pain management specialists have the knowledge and experience in state of the art procedures to relieve pain and get you moving. Patients in pain no longer have to endure unnecessary suffering while waiting for an appointment. Resolute Pain Solutions. Stop hurting. Start living today. Visit ResoluteMD.com slash TV. It makes me happy to go on the computer. I like feeling smart. Internet Essentials from Comcast has brought low-cost internet access to over 1.4 million low-income people at home. Internet Essentials help me progress in my schoolwork. It helped my grades move higher. Today, it's the largest broadband adoption program in America. It helped me a lot. Comcast NBC Universal, helping to bridge the digital divide. 6120. Monday. The brightest kids in America compete in the nation's premier science fair. Sam Champion is live from the White House, Monday on AMHQ. Monday, the brightest kids in America compete in the nation's premier science fair. Sam Champion is live from the White House, Monday on AMHQ. You know those neighbors always making weird inventions out of junk in their garage? We just gave them their own TV show. I think I just made Mother Nature my bed. <laughs> One man's trash. This is perfect. There's another man's wood-powered Jeep gasifier. <laughs> Brainstormers, premiering tonight at 9, only on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 83 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Today, partly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible late. High, 89. Winds south at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Tonight, cloudy intervals. Low, 68. Winds southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. 
Monday, mostly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. High 89. Here's our seven-day outlook. And here's our Weather Geeks trivia question. How big was the largest U.S. hailstone ever recorded? Well, here it is. Les Scott found this eight inch hailstone in his yard after a particularly strong storm. He said the dents in the ground in Vivian, South Dakota were as deep as coffee cans. When he spotted this stone, he put it in a cooler to keep it cold. The National Weather Service verified the size of the record setting stone and added that it weighed nearly two pounds. Wow, imagine that falling on your head. Imagine not, oh, hopefully. That would hurt. Yeah, it hurt a little bit. <laughs> but speaking of hail, uh, here's our hail, H-A-I-L, no section. And we talk about things that we want to dispel. And we, we keep hearing in the media and in different places that if changing climate, we're going to see more tornadoes. Is, is that true, Harold? And what would you say about that? Well, actually, the, the really interesting answer that we found is that we, haven't, we don't see any changes in the, in the number, at least in the historical record. But what we've seen is a change in the variability. Uh, when we, if we look at only the F1 and greater what, tornadoes. What do you mean by variability sure. for the Weta Geeks sure. audience? Yeah. Well, well, what we really mean is that when we think about that, we, we have fewer days now than we, than we used to have with at least one F1 tornado uh, on a day, uh -huh. which is the, the thing we've relatively consistently reported over the years. We've gone from about 150 in the mid-1970s to just 100 now, but the number of tornado days with lots of tornadoes, say 30 or more, has gone up by more than a factor of five. Yes. We've had ended up with the same number of tornadoes, about 500 F1 and graders per year, but a lot more variability. It's more of a, a bang or bust kind of phenomenon. And that, that's really interesting because I think tornadoes, it's one of these things where the, the peer reviewed literature is emerging. I know you recently had a paper summarizing where we are on some of this, but I think it often gets misused in the media, the notion of tornadoes and climate. So I'm glad to see that you guys are out there clarifying. Uh, Patrick, Speaking of that, how do we track the changing tornado counts over time? We've had new technology emerge from the 70s, um, Doppler radar issued tornadoes now. How does that affect the climate record when we're trying to determine these types of things? Well, primarily the increase has been with the really weak tornadoes. So the simple way to account for that is just drop out the weak tornadoes. And if you look at F1 or greater or stronger tornadoes, uh, that, that trend has been pretty consistent since the mid 1950s. So if you, if you use that as your baseline, that's probably the best way to go when looking at the tornado database. And I want to come back to you before I come to Harold. So tell us a little bit briefly about the expert sounding that you've been involved with and working with. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, Sat there and decided it was one of the things that we've a lot of, uh, as you work in the forecast desk and you see something that seems really unusual and you want to sit there and be like, hmm, can I put this in context? So what we did, a group of us did is we ran it through, we processed all the historical soundings back to the, the 1950s for the United States and decided let's build a, a web interface for users to come query it and be able to see uh, just where certain parameters fit during the time of year and is it how anomalous it is. Uh, and I will say that down the road, we're, we're, I'm working on code to actually implement so that instead of just looking at time series through the year, you can actually start to do two-dimensional plots so you can compare one variable against another and just see how where you are where you are in the parameter space. So Very hopefully awesome. that'll be coming down the road. And that's available at the uh, SBC that's website? That's available on our uh, Storm Prediction Center website under the Forecast Tools section. Okay, and Harold, as we kind of wrap it up here, I mean, we've heard about some things that are coming down the pipe. We've heard about the dual pole radar and some of the next generation radar. In your view as an expert, one of, what I consider one of the top experts in the field, what, what's next from the NSSL or as a severe storms community? Well, I think our, our big challenge in all of weather actually comes not so much in the technology, but then in how we communicate with people and how we interact with people. Uh, Alan Murphy in 1993 had a paper that everybody in the weather field ought to look at, which is on what is a good forecast. And he identified different kinds of goodness in forecasts. The quality, what the, does the forecast look like? A Weather. But more importantly for us, the value. Do people make good decisions using it? And that's our big challenge is going to that final mile of getting people to actually be able to make good decisions using forecast information. And in 10 seconds or less, what about you, Patrick? What's the big next thing from your perspective? I agree completely with Harold. It's got to be about the communication. If nobody gets our weather, if nobody gets forecast and what good is it? Yeah, I, I think I agree with that. And uh, so we we going to have to end it there. But we'd love to hear your thoughts on the show. You can find us on Twitter at WXGeeks TWC. We've also got a Facebook page where you'll find clips from today's shows and a few of our past shows as well. Join us again next week on Weather Geeks.
After years of being treated like she was invisible, it occurred to Mindy she might actually be invisible. But Mindy was actually not invisible. Ooh, what are you doing? Can you see me? Yeah. She had just always been treated that you way. You don't look at me like that. There are worse things than an attractive woman touching your body. Okay. Join the nation that sees you as a priority. Nationwide is on your side. If you've ever wondered how you're going to survive another harsh winter from torrential rain showers or savor the last warm rays of sun, step inside the Jeep Grand Cherokee and wonder no more. This is the Jeep Grand Cherokee, the most awarded SUV ever. Well-qualified lessees can lease the 2015 Grand Cherokee Laredo for $349 a month. Can a protein originally found in a jellyfish improve your memory? Our scientists say yes. Researchers have discovered a protein that actually supports healthier brain function. It's the breakthrough in a supplement called Prevagen. As we age, we lose proteins that support our brain. Prevagen supplements these proteins and has been clinically shown to improve memory. It's safe and effective. For support of healthier brain function, a sharper mind, and clearer thinking, try Prevagen for yourself today. If you're taking multiple medications, does your mouth often feel dry? A dry mouth can be a side effect of many medications, but it can also lead to tooth decay and bad breath. That's why there's Biotene. Available as an oral rinse, toothpaste, spray, or gel, Biotene can provide soothing relief, and it helps keep your mouth healthy, too. Remember, while your medication is doing you good, a dry mouth isn't. Biotene, for people who suffer from a dry mouth. Whatever their stickers say, they'll all lose suction because their filters clog. But with our sonic tips oscillating at 5,000 hertz, only new Dyson Kinetic Science won't lose suction. All right, so this Tylenol arthritis lasts eight hours, but a leave can last 12 hours. And a leave is proven to work better on pain than Tylenol arthritis. So why am I still thinking about this? How are you? Get a leave, proven better on pain. I knew instantly that this was, wow. It's Crest HD. It's amazing. New Crest HD gives you a six times healthier mouth and six times whiter teeth in just one week. It gets practically every detail. That's why it's called HD. Try new Crest Pro Health HD. The future of the market is never clear, but at T. Rowe Price, we can help guide your retirement savings. Our experience is one reason 100% of our retirement funds beat their 10-year LIPR averages. So wherever your long-term goals take you, we can help you feel confident. Request a prospectus or summary prospectus with investment information, risks, fees, and expenses to read and consider carefully before investing. Call us or your advisor. T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Monday, the brightest kids in America compete in the nation's premier science fair. Sam Champion is live from the White House, Monday on AMHQ. Neighbors always making weird inventions out of junk in their garage. We just gave them their own TV show. Oh! Come on, wind. I think I just made Mother Nature my bitch. <laughs> One man's trash. This is perfect. There's another man's wood powered Jeep gasifier. <laughs> Brainstormers, premiering tonight at 9, only on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 83 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Today, partly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible late. High, 89. Winds south at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Tonight, cloudy intervals. Low, 68. Winds southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Monday, mostly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. High, 89. Here's our seven-day outlook. Monday, the brightest kids in America compete in the nation's premier science fair. Sam Champion is live from the White House, Monday on AMHQ. Yeah, we're gonna... 
world number one, Rory McIlroy, and the PGA Tour's biggest stars take center stage in the King's Backyard. The Arno Palmer Invitational, presented by MasterCard. Today at 12.30 on Golf Channel. You know you're going to go out in bad weather. We're willing to take a lot of risk. He has no heartbeat, he's got no pulse. These people are counting on us. So let's go! I've never been so terrified. When you go out there, it's dangerous. We have uncovered a remarkable planet. A world of extreme weather. Alien landscapes. And bizarre phenomena. It's the most complex system we know of in the universe. That planet is Earth. And we are only beginning to unlock its secrets. It is a killer cloud that the weatherman can't predict. This is a belt from the guts of the Earth. A volcanic storm that can bring down a jumbo jet. On any given day, at least 20 are erupting on planet Earth. And one could turn a good day into doomsday. Straight from the planet's molten core to the sky above, volcanic weather is about to change the forecast for the planet on Secrets of the Earth. Even from space, Earth's swirling clouds are a dead giveaway that this can be a stormy planet. But look closely. Another type of cloud indicates weather of a different kind. These are volcanic eruptions, and they have a secret power to alter Earth's weather forever. Volcanic weather is the weather influenced by the presence of gigantic volcanic eruptions. We now realize that volcanic eruptions can influence the weather in ways that we never appreciated before. One volcanic hotspot is the Central American country of Guatemala, home to 37 volcanoes. The most dangerous is called Vulcan Fuego, or Fire Volcano. With nearly constant daily eruptions, it's Guatemala's most feared volcano. Mountain guide Victor Farrell has spent years climbing and observing Fuego. This is the spine of the beast. Volcan Fuego, one of the most active volcanoes on planet Earth. Right now, we're walking on what we call the knife ridge. You've got about a thousand feet drop on this side, a thousand foot drop on this side. This is a gnarly place to be. And if you look up ahead, you can see the very active cone. Sometimes it just blows. No warning, you just duck and run for cover. September 13, 2012. The 12,500 foot tall Fuego explodes. Blasting lava rocks and ash thousands of feet high. And forcing the evacuation of 30,000 people from the villages surrounding the nearby city of Antigua. If you can imagine this entire cone blowing apart. It shoots huge chunks of lava rock, sometimes the size of cars, straight up into the air, thousands of feet over your head. This is a belt from the guts of the Earth. Volcan Fuego is one of the biggest. But it's not the big chunks of rock that change the weather. It's the massive clouds of ash. Ash is formed in a split second when gases dissolved in molten rock expand under extreme pressure. The force of the escaping gas violently shreds the molten rock into ash. 
tiny particles of glass and rock that are smaller than the finest grains of beach sand and harder than a knife blade. It exceeds the speed of sound as it leaves that vent and it propels ash and this debris tens of miles into the atmosphere. We're sitting at about 12,500 feet going right up to the summit of Volcan Fuego. When there's a large eruption, ash belches out of this volcano. It can obscure and block any plane travel anywhere near this volcano. A volcanic ash cloud is the most dangerous form of volcanic weather a pilot will ever encounter. Since 1980, ash has damaged the engines of almost 100 airplanes and has endangered thousands of passengers. Airplanes cannot see ash clouds. It doesn't appear on radar. Radar can detect typical clouds because they contain moisture. But volcanic ash clouds are dry. The secret to why they're invisible to radar. December 15, 1989. An aircraft flies dangerously close to the ash cloud from Alaska's erupting Mount Redoubt. engines that these large jets are running, they run at such high temperatures that when ash is injected into those engines, it stops those engines from moving. At 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, the operating temperature of a jet engine is hot enough to melt volcanic ash. After the ash melts, it re-solidifies and clogs the engine's compressor, causing it to shut down. After a 14,000 foot freefall, the pilots are able to restart the engines just one minute before impact. When Iceland's Eyjafjallajökull Jokul volcano erupted in 2010, it ejected a massive ash cloud 55,000 feet high. Aviation authorities closed Europe's airspace for six days, stranding 10 million people. On Earth, the ash from volcanic eruptions can reach into the stratosphere and alter the weather across the planet. This is an ash slope formed by a, an explosive volcanic eruption. Fuego has had many of these eruptions. And uh, what we see here is coarser material than what we get in the stratosphere. But if a volcano spills out a lot of very fine ash and it goes into the stratosphere, that can have an effect on climate because some of that ash will blow. The finer particles rise with the wind column and can reach 20 miles into the Earth's stratosphere and spread out to cover thousands of square miles. The ash cloud is like a heavy blanket, preventing solar radiation from penetrating the atmosphere and causing the Earth to cool. The explosive eruptions can have major effects on weather. We call those volcanic winters. Volcanic winters are one of planet Earth's secret weather anomalies. June 15th, 1991, the Philippines. In the 20th century's second biggest eruption, Mount Pinatubo ejects 10 billion metric tons of pulverized rock and ash, killing nearly 800 people most of whom are crushed under collapsing roofs. Global temperatures fall by an average of 1.3 degrees over three years. The eruption stalls the Pacific jet stream, causing massive rainfall in some areas and drought in others. Catastrophic flooding of the Mississippi River in 1993 is blamed on Pinatubo. Volcanic ash can alter the climate around the world. But at the site of the eruption, it creates bizarre and violent weather phenomenon, a volcanic secret that scientists are just beginning to unlock. It took James Dyson 5,000 prototypes to invent the fabulous vacuum. 
and another 10,000 to invent the only vacuum that doesn't lose suction. Thanks to patented sonic tips, everything else is history. Search Kinetic now. It's time to take command of any adventure. With the fastest growing automotive luxury brand on the road, there's never been a better time to drive a Lexus during the Command Performance Sales Event. Get great offers on your favorite Lexus models now through March 31st. See your Lexus dealer. You get sick. You can't breathe through your nose. Suddenly, you're a mouth breather. <laughs> well, put on a Breathe Right strip and instantly open your nose up to 38% more than cold medicines alone so you can breathe and sleep. Shut your mouth and sleep right. Breathe right. Sometimes, bigger is better. But other times, bigger just gets in the way. At Brother, we know the biggest printer isn't always the best fit for every office. So we've come up with a bigger idea. Don't supersize, optimize. See how we can help you put the right printers in all the right places and help reduce your costs. Now that's big. Brother, at your side. Learn more at don'tsupersizeoptimize.com. In one moment, I felt it. I'm ready to lose weight, and I want to start now. Well, you can count, track, and worry over every meal, or you can lose weight simply with Jenny Craig. Bam! 50 pounds gone. Wow, ouch. First, meet your dedicated personal consultant who will help you reach your goals. Then, take home delicious food and start losing now. Visit JennyCraig.com for our best offer ever. A moment can change your whole life. With Jenny Craig. Monday, the brightest kids in America compete in the nation's premier science fair. Sam Champion is live from the White House, Monday on AMHQ. Volcanoes spawn wild weather on Earth. Sometimes they can even launch an electrical storm unlike anything in the solar system.